Hello, welcome to Learning Every Day with me, Lisa Aaron. I'm here to help you learn. Join our learning circle and subscribe. Today we're going to be learning about writing book reports. You're going to learn a lot of details to help you understand how books are written, what a genre is. A genres are folk tales, fables, myths, epics, fantasy stories, legends, mythology, historical stories, biographical, autobiographical, fiction, and nonfiction. We're also going to be learning elements of writing that the authors use, such as word choice, understanding the characters, the setting, the theme, the plot, the conflict, and point of view. You may not know what these terms are, but by the time you hear this lesson, you'll have a great understanding. Come learn with me. Let's have a great lesson on book reports and how to prepare them and write them to keep the interest of the reader. Book report, summary of the main ideas and arguments that the author presents. Book reports include the title of the book, its year of publication, the author's name, the genre, the type of category of the book, the main subject, plot, or theme of the book, a brief summary of the key points or ideas, your response to the book, identifying strengths and weaknesses, quotations from a book to support your thoughts and general observations, and would you recommend this book to others? These are the things that you should be including in a well-written book report. Genre, a literary composition characterized by a particular style or form. Understanding story genre. Folk tales. Folk tales, including fairy tales, are relatively short stories that originated as part of an oral tradition. For example, The Three Little Pigs. Folk tales are introduced with the words once upon a time. The setting is very general in detail. The structure is straightforward. The problem usually revolves around the journey from home. The characters are portrayed as one-dimensional. They are either good, bad, stupid, or clever, etc. And the ending is positive, and everyone lives happily ever after. Understanding story genre. Fables. Fables are brief narratives designed to teach a moral. It is told in story form to make the lesson easier to understand. The characters are usually animals who act foolish, good, bad, or in a particular manner to illustrate the moral. The characters are not personalized with names or special characteristics, and we do not become involved in their lives. The animals simply represent different characteristics of human nature. A famous writer from the 6th century BCE is Aesop's, whose writings were later translated in, in 1484. He wrote, the hare and the tortoise, or you may have heard the title, The Tortoise and the Hare. This fable teaches the lesson that slow and steady wins the race, and the race is not to the swiftest. Ecclesiastes 9.11 In this story, the hare, which is a very fast animal, teases the tortoise for being slow, but he gets too over himself, and he thinks he has all the time in the world, he ends up taking a nap, falls asleep, and the tortoise moves along steadily and eventually wins the race and beats the hare. I'm sure many of you have heard of this story and understanding what a fable is, that it teaches a lesson and a moral. And in this case, the slow and steady wins the race. Myths. People around the world have created myths to explain the origin of the world, how human beings were brought into existence, their relationships to gods, and how the sun and the moon originated. Other myths were created to explain the seasons, the mountains, and other physical features of the earth, the characteristics of various animals, and the constellations and other heavenly bodies. Greek mythology has many famous tales, one being of King Midas and his golden touch. In this story, King Midas does a favor, and as a reward, the other king grants him a wish King Midas decides that everything he touches he wishes to turn to gold. However, in the end he realizes that doesn't make him happy. 
Understanding story genre, epics. Epics are long narratives or a series of stories written about a hero, such as Robin Hood and King Arthur. Epics may be written in prose or poetry and deal with the heroic actions of this hero who's sharing the adventure of opposing the hero. Understanding story genre. Fantasy stories involve imaginary characters set in imaginary places. They are inspired by myth and folklore and often include magic. Examples, Harry Potter or Alice in Wonderland. Understanding story genre. Legends. Legends are stories coming down from the past that are thought to have some basis in history but are not verified. Example, Johnny Appleseed. Understanding story genre. Mystery stories. Mystery stories have crimes or problems to solve. They have clues and use detectives to solve the crime. The detectives usually have a special equipment like a special dog, costume, etc. An example of a mystery story is The Hound of the Bastervilles with Sherlock Holmes. Understanding story genre. Historical stories. Historical fiction takes place in the past, taking the reader to another time and place. The stories can be real, imagined, or both. An example of a historical story is Dracula. Understanding story genre. Biography. A written account of someone's life. Understanding story genre. Autobiographies. A written account of someone's life by that person. Understanding story genre. Fiction. Short stories and novels that describe imaginary events and people. Understanding story genre. Nonfiction. Writing based on facts, real events, and real people. When writing stories, the author must carefully choose word choice. Word choice, the manner in which something is expressed in words. Writer's style of words and phrases. Repetition. This includes repetition of words, events, and feelings. A good example is this, the gingerbread boy. You hear, run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. That's read over and over throughout the story. Imagery. There are vivid descriptions that appeal to the senses. Personification. This is the assignment of human traits, qualities, and powers to anything non-human. Oh, I think of the Wizard of Oz. The apple trees have feelings. They're like people. Think of the trees when they're throwing back the apples and they're talking to Dorothy and Toto and the Tin Man and the Lion and the Scarecrow. They're getting angry and saying, don't eat my apples, and they're throwing the apples back. That's an example of personification. Writer's style of words and phrases. Connotations is the emotional meaning associated with something a reader has in common with the writer, but not directly expressed. Words acquired, their connotations from the experiences we have. For example, blue is a color, but it is also a word used to describe a feeling of sadness. Onomatopoeia. This is a device in which authors use sound words to make their writing more vivid. Example, crash, slurp, vroom, meow, sound like their meaning. Writer's style of words and phrases. Alliteration. This is the repetition of the same initial consonant sound in consecutive words or in a word very close to the one another in a sentence. Consonants. This is a close repetition of consonant sounds in general, whereas alliteration depends on repetition of the same initial consonant sounds for its effect. Example, Mike likes his new bike. You can see the I-K-E repeated over and over in this sentence. Assonance. This is the repetition of similar vowel sounds without the repetition of consonant sounds. For example, no pain, no gain. The repetition is in the vowel. See the AI, the A sound. No pain, no gain. It's repeated. Hyperbole. This is a deliberate exaggeration which could not possibly be meant literally. For example, he got tons of money. Money doesn't weigh tons. You're not walking around with tons of money. You're walking around with lots of money, but not the weight of tons. 
writer's style of words and phrases, wordplay. Authors sometimes play with words for their own amusement and to enhance the pleasure of reading their works. It may be used of a familiar phrase. A second type of wordplay involves puns, words with different meanings or homonyms. The example of the works of Amelia Bedelia. Parody. Authors will sometimes vary or mimic the language and style of a well-known piece of writing or way of talking. Writer's style of words and phrases. Biased language. This is a deliberate attempt to prejudice a reader, either positively or negatively. Effective words. These are words that create the most precise image and convey ideas most effectively. Exceptional words. These are words rarely found or expected. Professional words. Words of special meaning in a particular field. Coined words. Sometimes coined words be become cliches that seem flat with meaning and make a bad impression. Coined words, when they become cliches, they're used over and over and over so often, they become flat with no meaning and people can be almost insulted by using cliches when they're used so often. Synonyms, these are words that have essentially the same meaning. Writing structure, the manner in which the story is organized. Writing structure, beginning, middle, end, or introduction, development, and resolution. This is the most basic elements of story structure in an arbitrary division of the main events of the story into three parts, a beginning, middle, and end. Motifs. It is the smallest part of a tale that can consist independently and is usually repeated throughout the story. It often gives clues to the theme or emphasizes an idea the writer wants to express. Example, a heart is a symbol for love. The writer may use the symbol to reinforce the motif. Characters. The main characters in the story. Writing structure. Characters. How authors develop characters. 1. Authors develop characters with a physical description such as the facial features, the body shapes, the habits of dress, the mannerisms, and gestures. Authors also focus on the physical personalities through actions the characters exhibit because of their physical makeup. The motivation of the character unfolds. 2. The author uses dialogue. Readers learn about the character in this manner. 3. The author uses actions. When there are inconsistencies among speech, thoughts, and action, actions are the best means of knowing what the characters are really like. Writer structure. Characterization. Who is the main character? Does the main character seem to be real or a personified animal? Which characters support or oppose the main character? How does each character get involved with the main character? What does the character look like? What words were used to describe each character? How would you describe the nature of each character? Can we expect a character to behave in a certain way when we get to know that character? Story element, character. When you develop a character sketch, you are introducing the reader to someone. You will need to give a strong mental snapshot about that person. Press how they talk and the things they do, as well as their values. Where does the character live? How does the character feel? How does the character act? How do others feel about the character? Here's our graphic organizer of our character. What does the character think? What does the character see? Smell, hear. What does the character do? How does he love? What does he feel? Where does he go? Story elements, character, the role in the story, the physical description of the character, the name, the age, gender, appearance, clothing, voice, habits, mannerisms, the character traits. How does the character act? What does the character do? How does the character think? How does the character speak? What are the character's interests? How do they deal with hardship? What makes them happy, sad, or angry? What kind of energy does the character have?
When describing a character, these are things that you would put in your book report so the reader can get a sense of who the characters are in the story. Story elements, the character, relationships, how do others feel about the character, what makes them the main or minor character in the story, who is the character's best friend, who are the character's friends, does the character have enemies, describe the character's family and where they grew up. Character arc. How does the character grow and learn? What does the character say for you to see that they've changed? Conflicts with other characters, conflicts with self, conflicts with nature, conflicts with society, conflicts with technology, conflicts with fate, conflicts with supernatural. Summary. Describe the character's story in from the beginning to end. Story element. Character. Do fictional characters ever remind you of yourself? Do they look, talk, think, feel, or face problems like you? Do some fictional characters look or act very different than you? To compare means to look for similarities. To contrast means to look for differences. Compare and contrast yourself to the fictional character. Name a character from a book, story, or comic strip. List ways you are like that character. List ways that you are not like the character. Use the ideas you listed to compare and contrast yourself to the fictional character. Story element characters. Positive character traits and negative character traits. Positive character traits are adventurous, attentive, ambitious, brave, charming, cheerful, considerate, cooperative, courageous, curious, easygoing. Negative character traits, afraid, aggressive, angry, annoying, anxious, boring, bossy, careless, cruel, dishonest, dull. Aren't these great descriptive words to describe the character? If you use these words in writing, your writing would sound terrific. More positive traits, friendly, fun, funny, brave, generous, graceful, hardworking, imaginative, intelligent, kind, loyal, negative character traits, evil, hateful, impatient, jealous, lazy, mean, messy, nosy, pessimistic, selfish, shy. Positive character traits, lucky, polite, pretty, smart, thankful, trustworthy. Negative character traits, spiteful, spoiled, stubborn, unfriendly, worried. Our character sketch. You might have a graphic organizer like this and you would put the feelings in one box, the description of the character in another box, the behavior of the character in the lower box, and the personality in the final box. Character is in the center. Character sketch. Physical appearance and personality. Find a quote from the book to describe the character's physical appearance. Put the quotation marks around the quote and the page number. Likes and dislikes or worries. Find a quote from the book to describe the character's likes or dislikes or fears. Put a quotation marks around the quote and the page number. In the center, include the character's name. Write a paragraph describing the main character. Relationships and others and the hopes and dreams and goals. Find a quote from the book to describe the character's relationship with other people in the book. Put a quotations around the quote and page number. The biggest problems. Find a quote from the book to describe the character's biggest problems in the book and put quotations around the quote and the page number. Setting. The place or surroundings where something takes place. Writing structure. Setting. How authors develop setting. 1. The author sets the mood by using sensory descriptions that allow the reader to draw a mental picture. A good description is the use so the reader can visualize the location of the characters and what they are seeing, feeling, and hearing. 2. A description can enhance the suspense. 3. The setting in some stories may be almost as important as the plot development. 4. The mood is established by the difficulties the characters have with the weather, the wildness, and the evilness, or in a country they must pass through. Writing structure. Setting. Where does the story take place? Can the, you picture the setting in your mind? When did the story take place? What are the setting details? 
Is there great detail or barely sketched? Does it seem authentic or a made up place? What words were used to describe the setting? Does the weather or time play an important role in the story? Is the setting necessary for the plot development? Theme is an underlying meaning of the story, often a recurring idea. Writing structure theme. When writing a book report, picking a book with the theme you care about is important because it can make the report writing easier. After you have established the theme and look closely at how it affects the book, including what impact this had upon you and why this book was enjoyable or not to read, some examples of theme include overcoming a monster, rags to riches, an adventure for quest to gain treasure or solve a problem, voyage and return home, comedy through adversaries, tragedy, a change of character to goodness. Writing structure theme. The importance of theme. The theme is the psychological subject or meaning of the story. The theme offers general truths about society, human nature, or the human condition, and usually deals with the emotions and values of the story characters. The feelings of the story characters have towards each other intensify through the theme. If the theme is good versus evil, the feelings of love and hate should come through strongly. There are usually two types of themes. Explicit themes are stated openly and clearly in the story. Implicit themes are implied in the story rather than openly stated in the text. Implicit themes are developed as the character attempts to overcome the obstacles that would prevent them from reaching their goal. You can see this through conflict. Writing structure theme. How did the story begin? What was the lead sentence? Did it hook you in the story? Is the idea or theme explicitly stated or implied in the story? Does the primary theme unfold through speech, thoughts, or actions of the characters? What was the problem? Are there other themes besides the primary one? How was the problem solved? Plot. A plot is what happens in the story. It is the turning point or action that raises a question that needs answering throughout the story. Writing structure plot. Plot development involves four steps. One, a problem is introduced. Two, roadblocks or complications are placed in the path of the characters. Three, there is a high point or climax in the conflict situation. Four, the problem is resolved and the roadblocks are overcome. Writing structure plot. What happened? What is the main goal? What happened first, next, last, etc.? Why did it happen? What words were used to describe the action? Does the main character or one of the supporting characters resolve the conflict? Are the opposing characters given a special power? Are the characters left to their own devices? Does some outside force or character come to the rescue that would help? Does the strength come from within the main character? Is there a shift from one form of conflict to another form? Does the author use foreshadowing? How? Plot summary. You do not want to just retell the story. You need to supply support that explains your opinion. You need to analyze the plot and share your thoughts of why you feel the way you do while offering support of your opinions. Conflict. A conflict is a literary device characterized by a struggle between opposing forces. Writing structure. Conflict. The seven conflict situations. Conflict is any tension or opposition between or forces in plot. The conflict gets the reader interested to read the story. 1. Conflict between characters and nature. Against wildlife, natural disasters, weather. An example is Jaws. 2. Conflict between a character and society against government, adults, or corruption. Example, the devil wears Prada. 3. Conflict between characters. Think of problem people that cause trouble. Example, cop versus robber. 4. Conflict within a character. Internal strife within the character, usually related to the character's expectations, desires, duties, or fears. To achieve what they want, they have to change drastically or overly sacrifice something of importance. Example, the Hunger Games.
Five, carrot conflict between technology, robots, scientific research, etc. Example, Frankenstein. Six, character conflict against supernatural, forces of fate, religion, ghosts, gods, demons, or aliens. Example, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Seven, conflict between character and fate, dealing with God while asserting their free will. Example, Greek tragedies. Point of view is the narrative telling the story from his or her perspective. Writing structure, point of view. First person narrator. This is where the narrator takes an active part in the story, speaking as an eyewitness and participant in the events. The person speaking becomes the center point of the narrative, thus becoming the protagonist of the story. They use first person pronouns, I, me, mine, etc. Examples, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn or Autobiographies. You'll be able to tell first person point of view by answering these questions. One, is the story told in first person? Two, is the main character telling the story or is another character telling it? Three, is the narrator speaking as an eyewitness as well as a participant in the events? Four, do we learn about the other characters only through what the narrator sees and what the other characters tell the narrator? Writing structure point of view. Objective third person point of view. The reader becomes the eyewitness and can only see, hear, and learn what is audible and what others say about the character and situations. Their narrator shares access with the reader to the character's thoughts, feelings, experiences, etc., but not limited to doing so with other characters in the story. We will know that it's objective third person point of view when we answer these questions. One, is what we learn about the story only what we see and hear as eyewitnesses? Two, are we restricted to only hearing dialogue and seeing actions and settings? Three, can we listen in on a character's thoughts? Writing structure point of view, limited ominous point of view. The story is told in third person and the author needs to concentrate on the thoughts, feelings, and important past experience of the main character. We will know that it's limited omniscient point of view if we can answer these questions. One, are we limited to overhearing the thoughts of just one person or two characters? Two, does the narrator tell us how these characters feel? Three, is the story told in third person? Four, does the author stick to the dialogue, actions, and physical descriptions when discussing the other characters in the story? Writing structure, point of view. Ominous point of view. The author tells the reader about the thought processes of each character without learning how the information is obtained. The author sees all and knows all about the story and the characters. The ominous point of view is, is where the narrator knows more than the characters in their story. We know it's ominous point of view by answering these questions. One, do we know what the character is thinking? Two, does the narrator tell us how the character feels? Three, does the narrator tell what the character's ideas are before he or she tells anyone else? Four, is the story told in third person? Writing structure point of view. Character point of view. The story is told in third person through the eyes of an important character. The limitation is that the character selected can only guess at the motives of the other characters. We know it's character point of view when we can answer these questions. One, has the author selected one character through eyes the story will be told? Two, is the story told in third person? Three, does the author tell us about the other characters only through their actions, dialogue, and physical descriptions? Four, can we only overhear the thinking of the characters through whom the story is being told. Parts of a book report. You need the title. Include the title of the book. Be sure to look at the book cover to make certain you have spelled and punctuated it correctly. Two, the author. Include the, the name of the author. Again, you want to give the author all the credit he or she deserves, so double check the spelling of the name. Include information about the author's style and point of view. Main characters. 
Give the names of the main characters and a few words about who they are. That way people will know who the book is about. Setting. Tell about the setting. It includes when and where the story takes place. Telling about the setting helps people imagine the story. The summary briefly explains what happens in the book. Just a few sentences to summarize should do it, but be sure not to give away any surprises. What I thought. At the end of the book report, write down how you feel about the book and why. This part of the report gives you a chance to express yourself. I've enjoyed learning with you. If this was helpful, subscribe for future videos. Check out these, these educational books for their academic usefulness.